Hello, I am Mika Seppälä. In this video I discuss a solved problem on optimization in which problem we optimize cone-shaped cups. This is problem number 12 of the set of solved problems regarding optimization. A cone-shaped paper cup is to be made to hold 27 cubic centimeters of water. Our task is to find the height and the radius of the cup that will use the smallest amount of paper. We start by recalling that uh, the volume of a cone whose height is h and radius r is one third times h times pi times r squared. So it is one third times height times the area of the bottom of the cone. So we consider a cone shaped paper cup whose height is h and radius r and uh, we know that its volume must be 27 cubic centimeters. Therefore we have a relation between h and r namely one third times h times pi times r squared must be 27. Of this relation it is easy to solve h in terms of r we get h equals 3 times 27, which is 81, divided by pi r squared. Now, minimizing the amount of paper needed means minimizing the lateral area of the cone. To find the lateral area, we cut the cone open to obtain a sector of a disk. Cutting the cone open and flattening it to a sector of the disk works in the following way. First we consider a cone here whose top is now a circular disk, as shown in this picture, of radius r, and whose height is h. We first observe that every point on the circle of radius r bounding the cone lies at the distance square root of r squared plus h squared from the vertex of the cone. We also observe that the length of the circle bounding the cone is 2 times pi times r. Next we cut the cone open along the blue line indicated here in this picture and we observe that we do get a sector of a disk because every point on the circle bounding this cone lies at the same distance from the vertex of the cone. Now, this distance is square root of r squared plus h squared, so this means that the radius of the disk that we obtain by cutting this cone open is square root of r squared plus h squared. We do not get the whole disk, of course. We get only a sector of the disk. And the sector of the disk is uh, defined by saying that the length of the circular arc on the boundary of the sector of the disk is 2 times pi times r. So this blue domain on the right, the blue sector of the disk, corresponds to this cone on the left. This is how the flattening of the cone works. So we have flattened our cone to a sector of a disk. The radius of this sector is square root of r squared plus h squared, and the length of the circular boundary of this sector is 2 times pi times r. Therefore, the angle measured in radians is the length of the circular boundary, 2 times pi times r, divided by the length of the circle of radius square root of r squared plus h squared, that is 2 times pi times r divided by 2 times pi times square root of r squared plus h squared, times the full angle, which is 2 pi. So this is how this angle is measured, the angle of this blue sector of the disk. And here, of course, simplification happens because 2 pi appears twice in the numerator and once in the denominator, so it cancels out. And we get that the angle of this sector is 2 times pi times r divided by square root of r squared plus h squared. Now the area of this sector is the angle of this sector divided by the full angle times the area of the disk in question. The full angle is 2 pi, so we start by 1 divided by 2 pi times the angle of the 
sector which was computed to be 2 pi r divided by square root of r squared plus 8 squared times the area of the full disk which is pi times radius squared that is in this case pi times square root of r squared plus 8 squared and that squared now cancellation happens so first of all 2 pi appears both in the numerator and denominator so this cancels out also square root of r squared plus 8 squared appears in the denominator and in the numerator it appears twice therefore square root of r squared plus 8 squared also cancels out and we obtain that this area of the sector is pi times r times square root of r squared plus h squared. Now this area contains two variables namely r and h but we have already computed that h equals 81 divided by pi times r squared. This is a condition that we obtained from the fact that we knew what the volume of the cone has to be. So we substitute that quantity in place of h and we get that the area as a function of r is pi times r times square root of r squared plus 81 squared divided by pi squared times r to the fourth. And a simplification of this expression yields that the area is square root of pi squared r to the sixth plus 81 squared and that square root divided by r. So this is the area of the cone as expressed as a function of r. So we have established that the area of the cone, a r, is square root of pi squared times r to the power 6 plus 81 squared and that square root divided by r. Our task is to minimize this area. Our task is to find that value of r for which a of r is as small as possible. Clearly, we consider only positive values of r because r measures distance. So we have to understand how this function a of r depends on r, and to that end we derive that function. We derive using the product rule rather than the quotient rule first. This is merely for notational convenience and for brevity of expressions. So the derivative of 1 divided by r is minus 1 divided by r squared and that will be multiplied by the other factor which is square root of pi squared r to the 6 plus 81 squared and then we have plus the first factor which was 1 over r times the derivative of the second factor that is the derivative of square root of pi squared r to the 6 plus 81 squared and that can be computed easily using the power and chain rules and we get that that derivative is 6 times pi squared r to the fifth divided by 2 times square root of pi squared r to the sixth plus 81 squared. Now some cancellation happens 6 divided by 2 is 3 and we write this term first in this expression so we get that that uh, a prime of r is 3 times pi squared r to the fourth divided by square root of pi squared r to the sixth plus 81 squared and then we subtract the first term that was minus square root of pi squared r to the sixth plus 81 squared divided by r squared next we combine these two fractional expressions and we get that the derivative is 3 times pi squared r to the sixth minus pi squared r to the sixth minus 81 squared and that divided by r squared times square root of pi squared r to the 6 plus 81 squared. Now in the numerator we have 3 times pi squared r to the 6 minus pi squared r to the 6 that amounts to 2 times pi squared r to the 6. So after simplifications we get that the derivative of this function capital A is 2 times pi squared r to the 6 minus 81 squared divided by r squared times square root of pi squared r to the 6 plus 81 squared. Now when r is positive the denominator is always positive and the equation a prime of r equals 0 is now equivalent to saying that the numerator is 0 that is 2 times pi squared r to the 6 minus 81 squared is 0. This is easy to solve. We get r equals 
either plus or minus of 6 root of 81 squared divided by 2 times pi squared. This is approximately plus or minus 2.6 centimeters. Clearly, the minus sign is irrelevant for us because r is a radius of a disk. Therefore, this uh, number is positive, and the only only numbers that we consider are positive numbers. Also, the numerator of the derivative, 2 times pi squared, r to the 6 minus 81 squared. This is clearly negative when r is less than 2.6 and positive